What's going on Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams. Thanks for joining me from the Reef Builder Studio for another video about our Nano Reef Tank. But before we get into that, I just wanna let everybody know that in just under two weeks, in Sydney, Australia, we're gonna be hosting Reef Stock for the first time since before the pandemic. And we cannot wait to see all our Aussie friends again. Uh, make sure to go to reefstock.show for all the information about raffle prizes, speakers, vendors. We hope to see a lot of great new corals, um, some awesome new products, and uh, hope to see everybody out there. And now let's get into the video. You guys have been following along the saga of our little nano reef tank for a long time and for the most part we've really taken the most light-handed approach to this reef tank, kind of letting the green star polyp be a pachyclavularia. Um, but uh, for the last month or so it's kind of been reaching a tipping point that uh, we've done some good work on the right side of this tank but the left side and top side of this tank, um, a few of green star polyps is really awesome but when you've been staring at it for a really long time uh, we're just kind of over it and in certain places you can see it's starting to encroach on our pink gani that we put in here it's starting to encroach on some of the sun polyps that we put in there um, I didn't think the sun polyps would uh, suffer from green star polyp brushing against it um, but thankfully this is gonna be a really easy tank to rescape like half the thing because it's only gonna take two rocks. And uh, the corals in here have been looking a lot better. Um, we have been doing like a weekly water exchange of about 50% with the system water. So we don't have to dose, so, so we don't have to test. We just, you know, drain half and then exchange it with a bigger system where we are testing and dosing. And that's just made it a lot easier um, for us to kind of manage the chemistry in this aquarium. Um, but like I said, thankfully it was a, uh, um, uh, local fish store Saturday last year I picked up a nice rock that was covered as nice orange zoanthids and it had one bubble two bubble tip anemones one of those bubble tip anemones uh, jumped off but the one remaining one has since split and it's a little bit orangish a little bit splattered a little bit green tip and it's just never had its time to shine but because there's no power heads in this aquarium um, except for in the back you know right behind the partition um, this I think this would be a perfect place to put that rock in here and to uh, just kind of really balance out all the heavy green, yellow, and more green uh, with a nice big orange rock and a, little, a couple of bubble tip anemones. Really uh, got this tank under control. There's just a few scattered Aptasia left, but I kind of don't want to work on that today. Uh, today, I really want to work on removing pretty much this half of the aquascape and then peeling back the green star polyp that's starting to grow on the sides of the tank. But before we do that, uh, we're definitely going to put just a little bit, maybe just uh, you know a couple tablespoons worth of activated carbon in the filter sock just to soak up any potential toxins that might be released from the green star polyp um, that's nothing like zoanthid, definitely nothing like, you know, the uh, uh, sun polyp palatho grandis. Um, but just to keep everything kind of smooth and clear, we can put a little carbon in there. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing we did is we removed the uh, comb, the overflow comb, uh, bless Red Sea for making that part removable because otherwise it would have been really hard to get everything back on track. But now that the water level is gonna be riding a little bit lower, we're gonna have this whole section of green star polyp on the sides that's going to be uh, drying out and uh, just not a good thing to have in our tank. So we're gonna gently peel away the parts that's on the glass and the edge and uh, then we'll be able to get to the rock. Well, that was oddly satisfying. I feel like I just edged the lawn, even though I don't have any grass. I got you know the next best thing in the form of a green star polyp. So now we've got that confined to the back wall, and I think it'll be a nice backdrop, a nice accent piece for the top. And so the next part is going to be pretty easy if I can dodge the uh, clownfish bites. And we're just going to take this rock 
with us. There we go. And we'll put some of these, oh here, this is really cool. You can see on the back side, it's really started to branch, forming all these little tendrils. And once in a while, you can get green star polyps to throw out um, just straight up branches. And it looks really cool. And sometimes they only grow branching. Um, we used to think that's a strain, but I'm still, I'm not super sure, but that's a really cool growth form from green star polyp. This is such a cool growth form of green star polyps. I think I'd leave it in here if it looks just like that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is probably put this in a different tank upside down and see if I can encourage those uh, tendrils to turn into proper branches. So here's the first main rock out. And then I can go ahead and grab this one as well. And then just to slow things down, just to slow the green star polyp down a little bit, I'm going to trim off just a touch off this back part here. While we had the rocks out, it just seemed kind of derelict not to do a little siphoning of the sand that was underneath where we couldn't reach for the last half a year or something. I don't know how you sand guys do it because it just seems like so much work and it grinds at my OCD knowing how much detritus and funk is uh, growing in there. But now that we have the water change done, siphoned the gravel a little bit um, and got the water going, it's time to do the very simple rescaping procedure. So we got a little piece of life rock and I'm still getting attacked by these savage clownfish here. I'm gonna put you like that. This is one of those beautiful uh, Morocco rocks from Premium Aquatics. So I'm gonna try to just put it like this to make kind of a, uh, an arch. That's definitely what it is. We've got a nice swim through in the back. If all goes well, this piece is just gonna fit in there real nicely. All right, where are those anemones? Anemones right there. Kind of want them pointed up. And there's some green star polyp on this rock as well. But if we put it like this, then it's just gonna be green star on green star violence. How's that look? Cool, actually, I really like that. So. Uh, we're just going to give it a couple hours for the tank to clear up, for the, uh, the polyps and anemones to open back up, and uh, we'll show you when uh, everything's back in full bloom. It's been uh, almost 24 hours since we started our work on the Nano Reef Tank, and as you can see, I added a few extra surprises to the aquarium. Um, the orange rock has filled in really well. The uh, green star polyp is still recuperating from the shock of how much we uh, removed from the aquarium and cut it off at the ends. Um, but you'll notice on the right side on that beautiful piece of uh, Morocco rock, it was just some prime real estate and I had literally extra torches um, that needed homes. So I fragged from those colonies and put three different colors of true Euphilia glabrescence. So on the left side, we've got a green strain with a kind of pinkish whitish tip. On the right side is uh, the classic um, dragon sole that is a uh, kind of orangish with a brighter yellow green tip. And then underneath here, just a little bit bigger, that is also an orangish style uh, torch coral with green tips, but clearly a different strain from the old school dragon sole. And it, you know, we used to have more euphilias in here, um, but took them out when the primary torch coral started really taking over, when the green star polyps kind of grew like crazy. And uh, I think we'll do, we'll do like a super cut of this tank uh, over, over the years, maybe at the, the three year mark that's coming up in about five or six months, but uh, really enjoyed working on this tank because for the first year or so of this tank, you know, we really kind of wanted to prove a point that you could set up a tank in one day, that you could let it run 
just without doing anything else for exactly a year. And uh, now that we've kind of made those points and you know, this tank is still rocking and still just super easy to take care of, you know, it's time for us to just get a little bit more hands on with it. So it's cool to finally spice it up with some, you know, big old rock of orange zoanthids and three different strains of, of more Indonesian, kind of more branchy style torch coral compared to the Australian strain. Now I know what you guys are thinking. This guy's not as gold as he has been, but he's actually coloring up a little bit more now that we're not starving the tank for dosing and for nutrients. But uh, yeah, it's a really fun tank again. And I always say that with the reef tanks that you have, you know, if you're engaged with them, you just kind of enjoy them a little bit more. When it just sits there and it's kind of an ornament, it's not as easy or as fun to look and to see what the new corals are doing. So um, I hope you guys enjoy the new version of the reef tank. It's funny how changing out two rocks and putting in three frags of torch coral can just really transform what is essentially 50% of the aquarium. Um, I hope the green star pulp, you know, sticks around and makes a nice backdrop on the back and we're gonna do what we can to keep it in place. And then the, the, the final thing is the, those bubble tip anemones, um, they've had 24 hours and that's as much as they've opened up. You can just barely see the bubble tips poking through and it'll be fun to, to see if these clownfish still remember how to be clownfish and will go in those anemones. Um, who knows how they'll transform in the aquarium over time, um, whether they'll get long tentacles, whether they'll run around and start sticking stuff and uh, maybe get a lot more colorful along the way. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the transformation of those bubble tips and see how all our torch corals grow. Um, there's never been a, a coral that has captivated the reef aquarium hobby so much for so long than torch corals. So it's nice to kind of present a few different strains in this tank for you guys. So um, just remember, if you're in uh, Sydney or New South Wales, um, in the next week or two, put it on your calendar that uh, Reef Stock is happening in Sydney, Reef Stock Australia. Make sure to go to reefstock.show for more information. Hope to see everybody there. And in the meantime, uh, we'll catch you guys in another video. Thanks for watching.